exclude that on the marketing materials, but well, the guys are from marketing, they don't know what they are doing, right? <laughs> but the truth is, uh, don't count on your IPS for patching, okay? Don't, uh, patch as soon as you can. Really patch your systems. Don't believe the IPS is blocking it. I saw amazing things from IPSs over there, okay? One thing that I saw from IPS was a really good way to block uh, an exploit in PDF. So it was an exploit happening inside a specific file format inside a compressed image in PDF. So what this company decided to do to avoid the exploitation? They block any PDF, name it POC underscore exploits dot PDF. <laughs> Makes sense. Nobody's going to rename the file, right? Nobody. Everybody sends POC underscore exploits dot PDF. Oh, well, they did well in NSS, by the way. Yeah, uh, there is any vendor that didn't? Do you guys know any vendor that did shit in NSS? No? Well, weird. They test all the vendors, so, but all the vendors do well. <coughs> mm. Suspicious. Uh, well, false positives are very important for IPS, okay? Don't let anybody say, hey, we detect more. Okay, but what about false positives? They're even more important than the detection. Why? Because they will flood your administrator or whatsoever is looking to the logs. And this guy will just stop looking if there is too many alerts. That's the truth. Everything will pass. It's like if there is nothing there. Okay? So false positives are very important. And it's very important to understand how to avoid them or how they, what the company really does to avoid them. And the false positives happen even more because the first step, as I said, it's not a bunch of parsers. If it was a, a real parser, there was no false positives for the protection, right? Because you know, you are parsing, you know what is there or what is not, and what is supposed to be there or not. But the truth is, it's not a real parser. It's more like a pattern matching kind of technology. And uh, uh, another myth is, uh, it was a question that uh, a good friend of mine came to me and said, hey man, I was thinking, uh, what is the features that the AV, the antivirus has, that the rogue AV don't? So why do you use AV and not a rogue AV, right? That, that was basically the question. And then we started listing, listen, uh, creating a list. So both does not guarantee anything. Uh, both have upgrades to premium option. That, that's an important option in our, 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 our antiviruses. Both have a nice guy, GUI. But what's important is the wrong AV has a nicer GUI. Uh, both are like the performance of your computer, but the wrong AV less. It's faster. Okay? Uh, both will have false alarms, false positives. So, uh, I don't know. Why I will buy AV? I forgot it. At some point in the time, I just forget why people buy AV. I don't know why that happens, but uh, it seems to be interesting, this comparison. I never thought about that, and I, I, I think it's a, a good idea to think about and uh, try to understand, hey, what is going on? There is always things passing the AV. Why is that? So why build a research team? Basically, all the companies, uh, can have high benefits from security research. They will have a better understanding. They will have like a real life awareness. They will really, really understand what is going on. That's very important. And that's not important only for the security vendors. It's important to everybody. I really believe all the companies should have at least a researcher or somebody uh, to talk to which is a researcher, okay? Uh, this is, for me, it's really important. I don't understand how companies go with all that. And, uh, you know, like, uh, as, we, as was presented, or will be presented here in Hakito, researchers solve a lot of other problems. It's not exploitation-related problems. But, for example, a researcher is capable of solving, like, a log analysis problem, right? There will be a talk here in Hakito about that. And that's high benefit for companies. A researcher can provide a real understanding to the organization. He can really understand what a product is trying to do, not what the vendor is, start, is trying to tell you. Because like, 
for Vayner, it's very easy to go there and prove whatever of the product. I am creating the test environment, or you create the test environment, but I will configure my tool in such a way that I will pass your test environment. And that's the problem that I see for the customers that are buying that, right? In the end, uh, all the products seem to be good, right? The comparison says all the products are good. Everything out there says all the products are good. So what is going on? Why the companies will really try to improve? Since it's very difficult, according to the market for labels, to differentiate yourself. If you try to do something different, if you try to do something better, you can't because in the market where everything is lemon, it's very hard to sell something better. Why? Because it's difficult to pass the message. It's just difficult. Even if you are the biggest vendor, it's still difficult for you, okay? Uh, the experts, right? Uh, as I say, like everybody nowadays in their LinkedIn profile is a researcher. That, that's so funny. Like you go to the guy, okay, tell me what research that you already did. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. I, I don't understand this language, but it's probably some Indian tribe in the count of Brazil that speaks this language. I don't understand what he wanted to say. But the trouble is, the guy will not say anything because he never did real research. So uh, the problem is, remember the market for lemon lessons, okay? Uh, try to really identify what are the experts. Uh, there's a lot of companies around the world. Be a speaker in some of them means nothing. Don't matter if it is Hakito and H2HC or whatsoever conference you want to make. The, the, the conference needs to fill the space. The conference receives not much information about the talk. And usually, they also trust what the other conferences did to accept the talk. So be careful. Just be a speaker means nothing, OK? Try to look more, to look deeper. Uh, you know, there is a lot of security issues being released. Being one of the guys who found security issues also means nothing. As I said, it's very easy to classify something as exploitable and show beautiful things, right? It's very easy. So there's many people doing that, right? Uh, so pay attention. What is the only way to really identify the good people? Ask around. Go to the conferences. Talk to people. See what is the reputation of this researcher. So this is the way to really get the information, okay? And uh, I really hope people start doing that before classifying somebody as a researcher or something like that. And uh, uh, what to expect from a researcher? Uh, it's important to define some targets. Uh, if you don't know what do you want, don't expect much. Researchers are lazy creatures, okay? We are lazy. We like to drink. We like to party. And we do research. Uh, the order or the priority will depend on the task, right? <laughs> shit task, shit priority. That's a very nice way to schedule things, right? <laughs> don't define what you want or how you want. Uh, sorry, don't define how you want. Uh, if you really knew what you want, you don't need a researcher, right? You need a developer to code whatever you want, right? I always like to say to people, hey, okay, you are giving me the solution. Tell me first what is the problem, right? People usually go with the solution, okay? That's very common. Somebody goes to you and gives you a solution. So why do you need me if you are giving me the solution all right? I don't even know what is the problem, okay? Good solution, go for it, right? Uh, security research is not only exploitation. Uh, although exploitation is, is that very wide, right? A lot of marketing on, on exploitation. But the good researcher is also creating defensive capabilities, like the log analysis that the guy will just show here. Uh, co uh, solving complex problems. There's a bunch of complex problems in security. Malware analysis. All that is security research. So try to not focus only on exploitation, because that's, that's not cool. Uh, some companies try to count the number of the exploits per person per year, okay? Uh, I have a bunch of friends that work in a specific company. I don't like to name companies, so I'm not going to say the company is in Argentina. Uh, <laughs> but well, it's, a, it's a, a, a big company, a big player on that. And they count like this, hey, how many exploits per person per year? 
That's so stupid. Why? Because how can you expect quality when you force somebody to, hey, you need to write 12 exploits in the year? It's a fixed number. So, okay, I find an issue that is very complex to exploit. Uh, okay, I find nothing. I find one that is easy. Yes, I found it. Exploit it. So that's what happens in the end. Okay? Uh, to work this way, you need a very capable manager that will be able to define, hey, this is very complex. So instead of 12 exploiting this year, I will accept from you 10 or whatsoever. So it's very difficult to manage like this. And uh, well, from what I heard, they are not doing that well. Uh, you know, like, in research companies, that's more common. Because like the company is a research company itself. But when you just have a research team, it's really not recommended. The best way to go is like have small groups working together in something. Like, hey, it's to write an exploit. Put two, three people to write the exploit together. That works very well. Everybody motivates the other. Everybody challenges each other. And that, that creates a very cool uh, way to go. Uh, and that's the way that I, I like more. And well, it's very easy to spot laziness. Right? Because there is no way. There is other people working on, on the same stuff. Uh, the, the, the research capabilities inside the companies sometimes are just hidden. Okay? Sometimes the companies don't even know they have a research capabilities. That's very common in not uh, security related companies. They have people there that are doing research as part of their job description. Okay? So they, they are responsible for discovering new ways to solve problems for the company. They are doing that all the time. But the company don't even understand that, that, that capability is over there. And there are different areas sometimes with a lot of potential for research. You just need to find them and put them to talk. And then research will start to flow and a lot of new things are going to come out from the company. That's really amazing to see that. And uh, if you look in, uh, into technology companies, it's even higher, the capabilities over there. Like, uh, it's impressive what you can do using a red there. People that is a red there. Knowledge that they are red have, but they don't do anything because they don't talk to each other. Okay. So, just to finish, uh, many processes are no process. The management is always a, 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 a problem for research, right? Uh, paperwork is a pain. Nobody likes paperwork. And paperwork is supposed to be a problem for the managers, not for the, the guys doing research. Uh, it's really difficult uh, to track stuff around the company. So it's good to have some kind of uh, uh, information flow, but no much papers, OK? No, 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 no many processes. And well, guys. Very important information. The team is going to fly. The team is going to go to Brazil for H3C, to France for Hakito, and there's nothing you can do about that. Okay? Have in mind it. Really, researchers need to go to the conferences. That's where we exchange information. That's where we figure out there is other guys doing research in the same subject that you are doing research. And there is no way they will share stuff with you if they don't know you. So you can know them personally, or you can wait some years through the internet to